in the last few years, there's been way too many discoveries when it comes to exoplanets. Too many to cover every day, mostly because of prolific telescopes like the NASA's TESS. And TESS stands for Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite that was basically supposed to replace Kepler. And replace it did. Already discovering over 7,000 potential planets, or basically almost double of what Kepler discovered. And that's since its launch in 2018, but it still has so much to go. But obviously, in these last six years, it did make some really strange discoveries, or discoveries that basically nobody expected, with some planets being super exciting. We've discussed some of them in some of the previous videos in the description, but today we're going to be discussing the most recent discovery that represents something we've actually never seen before, but also something super exciting, and as always, in the habitable zone of the star system. The zone where we can actually expect liquid water to exist. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's talk about this new unusual exoplanet, why it's kind of exciting and somewhat strange, and of course talk about what this discovery means. But first, a quick reminder on how TESS searches for planets, and of course how this planet was discovered as well. This is the famous transit method. The method of looking at the star for a, a really long time in order to discover periodic dims in brightness. But depending on the type of a dim, and also depending on its length, we can actually use this to determine quite a lot about what passed in front of the star. As a matter of fact, by using the length and the depth of the dip, we can pretty much determine the exact size of the planet, and if there are any other objects in the vicinity, we can even work out its mass. And so by knowing the size and the mass, we can then start making conclusions about what sort of a planet this is, and how it compares to the solar system. And so in the last decade, a lot of super exciting exoplanets have been discovered this way. I guess the most exciting is still the TRAPPIST-1 system, but the one we're discussing today is exciting for slightly different reasons. So first, the study about this is as always in the description below, but here it's actually really important to mention that it wasn't really the scientists that kind of discovered this. It was the volunteer citizen scientists, part of the very famous Zooniverse project. This is a volunteering project that basically uses thousands of different participants, which you can actually become yourself. The link about this is in the description if you want to learn more. But basically by combining discoveries from the citizen sciences with the analysis of astronomers behind the study, they were able to discover a system that was initially missed by previous studies. Here they discovered an unusual, potentially Neptune-like world passing in front of a star extremely similar to our Sun. It's a G-type star. But here, at first, it only passed once, and the second passage was 272 days later, making this basically the second longest period discovered by TESS so far. And by having a planet in such a long period around a G-type star, it basically places it in the habitable zone, the area around the star where we can kind of maybe expect liquid water. But by continuously looking at the star system, they started to discover more things. First, they found potentially a second planet, much closer with a 34-day orbit, but also much, much bigger. Here, this was potentially some kind of a Jupiter-like planet, or possibly a little bit more similar to Saturn, because it's just over 100 masses of planet Earth. But because it orbits much closer, at a distance of Mercury from the Sun, it would naturally be much, much hotter. So this is basically a hot Jupiter. But so far, this is not too surprising. We've seen such star systems before, and even finding a habitable planet with a hot Jupiter is not really that big of a deal, at least anymore. A few dozen similar star systems exist out there. But it's really the third discovery that kind of surprised everyone. And for this, they had to look at the star using archival data from basically up to 100 years ago. And so by looking at 119 years of various observations, they actually discovered that this is not a single star, it's a binary system, and the second star orbits in a very strange way. Very eccentric orbit that actually takes it really far away from the main star for at least 230 years. But strangely enough, every 231 years, that star returns and approaches the star system at approximately 4.5 astronomical units, just a little bit closer than Jupiter to the Sun. And currently, that second star is actually pretty close to the first star, basically in the inner star system, which is why they kind of resemble a single object. But in older data, when they're much farther apart, 
it becomes obvious that this is a binary system. Making is a very unique star system we've actually never seen before. So we have this unusual Neptune-like planet, potentially 47 masses of planet Earth, and approximately 3.2 times size of planet Earth, but also in a habitable zone, which is super exciting. And that star system also has a second star that actually comes pretty close to everything every 231 years, potentially creating some really strange weather cycles around the star system. Here's actually an animation showing us what all of this might look like from just above the cloud layer of this planet. But I guess what's even more exciting is that previous studies have also suggested that a lot of these long period planets will usually contain a lot of moons, kind of like Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune and Uranus. And because here the period is 272 days, a chance for this planet to have a lot of moons is also really high. And it's of course the moons of this particular planet that would be especially exciting, mostly because we expect these moons to be kind of similar to what we have in a solar system and thus potentially have liquid oceans. Since they are in a habitable zone and since these moons would be predominantly a mixture of rock and likely a lot of water, they do have a chance to basically just be these global ocean worlds, possibly even with some kind of an atmospheric layer. And on the planet itself, which is currently referred to as Percival, named after a character from Harry Potter, is unlikely to be too exciting in terms of habitability, even though it potentially contains really warm or maybe even hot water clouds, it's really its hypothetical moons that the scientists are kind of excited to discover. And that's because statistically, some of them are going to have solid surface, some of them are going to have oceans, and some of them might even be kind of like planet Earth, just a little bit smaller in size. And so here the researchers are basically hoping for a new campaign, possibly with James Webb Space Telescope, especially because the brightness of the system is perfect for detecting these worlds. This is actually the brightest star currently known to us to host an exoplanet in the habitable zone, with the star itself being very similar to our Sun. Although here, because of the planets discovered so far, this can also help scientists figure out how planets form around binary systems, because this is also a very unique binary. And normally, when it comes to binary star systems, we actually don't find planets around them very often. And so here, this is a chance for scientists to figure out how planets form around multi-star systems. Here's roughly how the stars and the planets compare in terms of size. And it's that planet C that we're really curious about. But once again, all of this a result of citizen science. With this project involving over 43,000 members, already helping catalog approximately 25 million different objects. Not all planets, actually quite a lot of different objects, including asteroids, but this is basically one of the reasons why so many incredible discoveries have been made in the last 10 years. A combination of citizen science, working alongside with professional astronomers, and sometimes just a little bit of artificial intelligence. But even according to astronomers here, AI is just not really good at this, compared to actual humans. And so if you actually have any interest in astronomy, consider joining in in one of the links in the description. But when it comes to this bizarre star system, unfortunately we're not going to know much more about it until future observations or until the stars separate a little bit more in the next 30 years. It's right now still difficult to study all of this, because basically the stars are just a little bit too close together. Nevertheless, right now this is probably our best chance to potentially discover some kind of a habitable exomoon. Moon containing conditions perfect for extraterrestrial life. Although there have been some additional propositions that we've discussed in one of the videos in the description. Anyway, on that note, once there are some additional discoveries, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.